Welcome to Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. Join Stacy and learn from her 20 years of experience as she shares top-notch advice on marketing best practices for brands and walks you through how to leverage entertainment content and influencer partnerships to increase your brand's overall consumer engagement and most importantly, your sales. Welcome to another episode of Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. I'm Stacey Jones, and today I'm going to talk to you about how exactly to create a PR program for your medical practice and why it's just so important for your company to have a PR plan in place. This is a four-part podcast and provides you with very easy steps for you and your team to build a program, which will help drive PR awareness and make your appointment books even busier. My goal with this podcast today is to really bring you some value and show you how you can have your own PR campaign that's managed by your internal team, whether that be yourself or someone else or even a few someone else's, without necessarily having to have outside help unless you want it. Going it alone isn't something that most companies should really aspire to do, so you need to realize that what you're about to take on is a lot. I mean, quite frankly, PR takes a tremendous amount of work and really needs to be handled by someone with a dogged personality who is self-driven and won't burn out after getting rejection after rejection after rejection. Because PR is tough, really tough, and there's no magic formula to make it successful. Sure, there are things you can do along the way that will help guide you to success, and I'm going to give you those today. But it really is relentless and something that never, ever, ever ends. Because as soon as you stop doing your reach out, unless you or your brand are so magically fantastic that everyone is clamoring for you, the flames die out, even for the biggest companies or individuals, even celebrities. So why PR for your medical practice? Before you decide you want to embark on this great adventure, there's a question to go over with your team about and truly dig into the answer. And that question Why use PR as a part of your marketing plan and how is it exactly going to help you? What's really important to remember is that PR is the backbone to your medical practice marketing. Creating a sound PR plan is going to allow you to create a comprehensive and concise plan that you're going to build off of for all your future advertising and marketing needs. It's also going to allow you to build trust and credibility with your patients as well as your peers and it's going to bring you new patients and I'm sure you'd like that because it means more money. PR also conveys a message of reassurance and safety. Patients are often scared to try new medical practices without having someone out there who's already doing it and getting a little bit more information versus just you in your office saying, no, this is great, this is phenomenal, and having it in a magazine, in a journal, or on a television show. PR also conveys a message of reassurance and safety. Patients are often scared to try new medical practices without having someone out there who's already doing it and getting a little bit more information versus just you in your office saying, no, this is great, this is phenomenal, and having it in a magazine, in a journal, or on a television show. It just conveys that sense of security. It's also convenience, and it brings you a sense of success to your practice. So how do we start your PR program? You know you want PR. How do you go out and get it? The first thing I'm going to suggest you do is you're going to determine your strengths and your weaknesses to find what your story opportunities are. Everything about PR is about a story. What is unique about your practice? What is unique about your experience? What's unique about the staff that you have on your team that you've decided to bring into your office? Why do patients come to you versus your competitors? Knowing this is going to allow you to create your story. And the very first thing you're going to do before picking up the phone and calling all the media out there that you're excited that you have a story, that you have an idea, is that you're going to actually create a backbone so that anyone within the press, within the media, any journalist, any editor, they're going to know that whenever they look at any asset about you, that your story stays consistent. So that means owned media. That means your own media. When I say owned media, you own this. You can do with it as you wish. You control it. That's your website, your blog, your Twitter, your Facebook account, your Instagram account, your LinkedIn account, all those social media networks that are out there. They should all have one concise voice and they should all provide messaging that supports who you are and who your practice is. Getting ready for media is extremely important. I cannot say this enough. You're going to make sure that your website is up and ready. And I'm going to talk with you a little bit more about that in just a minute. You're going to also make sure that you have a media kit, which we're also going to go over. You're also going to get media training, which we'll also talk about. And you're going to hone in on that story that I've been talking about here. 
Then you need to make sure you're prepared. It's great to be proactive, but you're also going to need to be reactive. So as soon as you actually get a bite and someone says, we're interested in your story, tell me more. You need to be able to turn on a dime and get them the assets and get them the information they need so that they can run the story and evaluate it and book you and not have you actually stop the process. The next thing we need to do is determine the type of press you want and where it's located. Do you want to look at local press or do you want to look at a national base? All of this is going to really come down to you as an individual and how much experience you already have and how much press you've already gotten so that you can build upon it. With local market press, you can look at the town you're in, you can look at regional landscapes, or you can widen out to that national landscape. What type of broadcast media are we talking about here also? Are we talking about news? Are we talking about talk shows? Every town has local news. Every town, or every region at least, has local talk shows. Morning talk shows, daytime talk shows. These all have opportunities to build content, which is about you and your story. There's newspapers, there's magazines, there's trade journals, you have social media, and there's also bloggers, which you cannot discount. They're incredibly valuable. They write and they write and they write a ton, and they make it so that you get found because of Google SEO, if they put the right phrases in there. And if they're writing genuinely and honestly, the right phrases are exactly what your future patients are going to be typing in and finding you from. Having a really active blogging campaign program and engaging with bloggers who are willing to talk about you and show your practice and talk about your stories can be really strong and compelling. Then you're going to want to make sure PR works for you. Just because someone says TV is the best PR vehicle out there, it might not be for you. You need to find things that target you and show you in the best light. Do you have great communication skills? Are you engaging? Do people like listening to you? Or are you shy? Do you not like meeting people's eyes? Would you rather be behind the scenes? This is going to show in no matter what format you do. So we need to actually sculpt a program that best suits you. And this is going to let you know, do you want to do TV? Do you want to do print? Or do you want to do digital? And no matter what, you're going to be the expert, but is using the medium to make sure that's showing you again in the best possible light. And you need practice. Everyone needs practice. You need to get media trained. Work with someone to become a better speaker. Join Toastmasters or a local business networking group like BNI. There's so many options within all of our communities. Just get out there and talk, tell your story, and have people respond to you and talk more about it and practice your pitch. You're also going to need to establish your expertise. So why you? Why should people come to you versus your competition? You're going to promote your expertise in your executive bio. You're going to promote it in your website. You're going to promote it in any of your social media. You're going to promote it as you write blogs or white papers, both of which are great because you can link these all back to your website. And these are all tools journalists will look at. You're going to sign up for something called Help a Reporter Out. That's H-A-R-O, HARO, and you can go to their website. This is a source that allows experts and press to come together. The press will post their needs, and as an expert, you can respond. But you can also post yourself as an expert for them to reach out to. There's a few sites out there for this. You can do this for podcasts and radio interviews. Just do a little Googling and you'll find some options. With Hero, it's important to know you can sign up for different types of press and updates. One's medical, which of course I know everyone listening is going to be rushing to sign up for. But take a look at the others too. There's different consumer interest avenues that you can go to. There's business entrepreneur stories that you can look at. And they don't all have to necessarily have a medical angle. If your story works and you as a business or an entrepreneur or a doctor and a specialist in your field, you're going to have some cross that would be very interesting to look at to see how you can broaden and widen this out. You're also going to sign up for online expert databases. That might be realself.com, profnet, sourcewire, experts.com. Just Google and you're going to find a lot of different information that's valuable and it'll show you how to list yourself, your history, your CVs, and reporters will then actually come to you a little bit more often. You're also going to need to put your best foot forward. And for that, I mean, we're in a social world now. And anytime you have a patient or a customer who's not satisfied, one of their go-tos is to go online and post a comment about it. You need to look to see if you have any negative online press. And if so, how you can try to resolve that. How can you reach out? How can you make it good? How can you try to make it go away? You won't always be able to, but it's worth the try. You're also going to want to Google yourself and your practice, which is going to show how not only potential customers see you, but how media sees you. You're going to want to look at all of your own social media commentary that people have reposted in a positive or negative way. You're going to want to look at your Yelp reviews. 
everything under the sun along those lines. My next suggestion is that you're going to be finding out all you can about your competition. What makes your competition tick? Who are your competitors? If you don't know what stories are being covered in your area, how are you going to be able to position yourself as better, different, and more newsworthy? Find out what they're saying about themselves. Find out what other people are saying about them. Determine what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are. Why would someone want to interview their practice instead of your practice? And then the next step is to figure out how you are different. How are you going to differentiate yourself? You have to come up with your plan of how you're going to phrase your practice versus the competition. When someone says, why you versus them, you'll have that answer in your gut, ready to go. You won't have to ponder and think about it. It also allows you to position yourself very differently from the competition. So if they have something that's great, they've gotten lots of media and coverage around it. You don't need to go after that and try to get the same of the exact thing they've already gotten. You can just change your story a little bit and come at it from a different angle. It's also going to allow you to narrow in on your specific niche. One thing to keep in mind that some competition is good and lots of competition, it makes it hard to get noticed. No competition, that that is just bad. If you're not in an area where there's anyone getting any sort of coverage whatsoever, you need to figure out why the media doesn't think the audience is interested in your story. Patients are obviously interested if they're coming to you. Your future patients and consumers are interested in knowing what's going on in the world of medical technology that's going to make them look and feel better. And you want to find the middle ground. It means there is interest. It means there is room. And it means there's an ability to actually have your story showcased. And then here's another thing. You need to get trained to look good. And you need to not skip over this. I mentioned that we're going to talk about this a little bit more. And the principle behind media training is making sure that you're established as an expert so that when you are actually scheduled on air, whether it's a TV show, whether it's a radio show, a talk show, or even if it's in print, that you know not only what to say, but that you're comfortable. Lots of people freeze. It's a very natural instinct. And it's not something that people are used to having done. I've frozen. I've been on MSNBC and absolutely froze. Deer in the headlights expression. And it just happens. It's not something that you can control. But if you do a lot of practice, you can help maybe avoid it. You're going to need to practice in front of a camera. You're going to need people to ask you questions that you're not expecting. Those left fielders, that's why I froze. You're going to need to be able to come up with what those questions and answers might be. And it's going to allow you to be able to better convey your message of your story. And it's going to help compel the people who are watching and listening and reading to actually trust you. So when do you want to start training? The answer is now, even yesterday. Before you have a same-day interview, if you got a phone call and someone said, hey, we'd love to have you on the radio show XYZ tomorrow, you're not going to have time to get ready for it. So go ahead, have confidence, set that goal. Know you're going to have strong PR at one point in the near future and get ready for it. While you're rebooting your website, start training. While you're developing your media kit, start training. While you're researching who to contact, start training. And who should you train with? Well, look in your community for independent trainers. You don't need to go to a large agency necessarily. You can find people who have done this and who are experts at helping people become better speakers. Again, mentioned this before, even your local Toastmasters might be able to help you. Your local business networking groups might be able to help you as well. Just make sure that someone has experience, that they have tools to practice with. That means that they have microphones and speakers. They have televisions and monitors and video recording equipment. Because it's not just about how you sound. It's going to be about how you're standing, where your eyes are. Are your shoulders squared back if you're in a standing position? How are you crossing your legs? All of these are those physical signs that you want to make sure come across in a very positive manner. In my next podcast, we're going to focus on your website and making sure it's media friendly. Because quite frankly, it's rare that a medical practices website is good enough to get press attention. And if you can make your shine, you're going to get more coverage than your competitors. It's really all about presenting everything about you that a journalist might want to know to write a story and serving it all up in a pretty nicely tied package. Stop by HollywoodBranded.com for more tips. And you'll also find our library, which has infographics, white papers, ebooks, and videos, or our blog, blog blog.hollywoodbranded.com, which has hundreds of helpful hints on how to make brand, influencer, and entertainment content partnerships a success from the get-go. And visit learn.hollywoodbranded.com, where we've created a how-to learning platform for you to make an impact in your own business based on my over 20 years of expertise. And it includes videos and transcripts and quizzes to make sure you truly understand the materials and can take massive action today for your own business. 
That's it for this episode. I hope it was helpful and please let me know if you have any feedback. I'll see you next week. And as always, if you need a little or a lot of help, my agency Hollywood Branded is here to lend a hand. If you would leave a review or any questions I can address in the future, I'd really appreciate it as your feedback helps me know my advice is valuable and interesting to you. Are you ready to make the magic of product placement, celebrity event activations, or influencer partnerships help your sales? Visit HollywoodBranded.com to gain access to free content to learn which key tactics best fit your brand. You'll find surveys, webinars, daily blogs, eBooks, and guides, all created to make sure you have access to the best possible marketing practices. Let's make that entertainment marketing magic happen for you.